Hi everyone, this is Scott Woods, Product Manager for SolidWorks Composer here at Hawkridge Systems. And today we're going to be going over how to publish out a self-executable.exe file out of Composer. This is going to be a fully interactive document that's going to take everything we did in Composer and publish it out as a .exe file that anybody with a PC can open, rotate, do whatever they want with inside, check out the process, the animations, and so on, without having to install anything on their computer. Okay, so we have our steps of the process here. Just go ahead and play those, and as we've gone through and actually created the step-by-step -step content inside SOLIDWORKS Composer, uh, if you have seen the past videos, this is actually a SOLIDWORKS model that has been brought into SOLIDWORKS Composer, and then all these steps have been created. Uh, once we have all the step-by-step -step process that you would then take, extract as like images, use those in Word documents or websites and so on, we can actually take this document and produce an interactive, um, interactive content out of this document. Okay, so first thing you want to do is you want to go through your views or steps and just kind of get it ready for a user to be looking at. Uh, in the player, it's, you're capable of taking items and moving them around. So you have to specify what you want the user to be able to move and what you don't want, what you don't want them to move. So for instance, this step here, all of this stuff, uh, I don't want this to move in the player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it and then in the properties here, I'm just going to go ahead and say freeze. Or you can say freeze only in player. Either way works. Let's go ahead and select this items here and we'll go ahead and freeze those as well. You have to remember to update the view or it's not going to save your changes. We go on to the next one. This one is fine. Uh, it's not a bad thing to actually have uh, to allow the player to, to move annotations around in case they want to move them out of the way. Really the only thing we're looking for are items such as this right here, screwdriver. Okay, let's go ahead and freeze that, update, we'll go to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with these guys, freeze, and then update. Okay, so now the rest, I can just, looking at the thumbnails here, this is an actual annotation. There's some screwdrivers and stuff like that. So that's stuff I'm not too concerned about. Just these panels that I wanted to lock down. Uh, another thing you can do is you can lock down rotation and panning and stuff like that. So when the user opens up the document, they're going to see what you see right in front of us here. And we know that is because if you go to File, Properties, document properties right in the, oh, let's go to the project here. So right in project where it says view mode, you want to make sure view mode is checked. If view mode is not checked, then the first thing they're going to see is the animation timeline. So you can control if the user is going to see a view, which I have here, or the animation timeline just by simply unchecking that option there. All right, so here I'm able to rotate, I'm able to zoom in and out, I'm able to pan. If you look at the properties of the environment here, you can see I can control these options. So if I want to say that the user is not able to, let's give them rotate, not pan, not zoom. Sure, we'll leave selection on, and let's disable the highlighting there. We'll go and update the view, go to the next one, and this one I'm going to say uh, rotation, pan, zoom, highlight. We'll leave it the same on this one. M maybe we want to say this one you can pan, or maybe you can zoom, uh, but you can't rotate, something like that. I don't know. We'll go ahead and just test it out and see what it looks like in the player. Okay, and update that view. All right, so now what I want to do is create some navigational buttons. So the user is going to open this file, and they want some tools or some buttons to actually navigate through this, this document. So what I'm going to do is go to Author, Image 2D, and I'm going to go to All Buttons. Drop those buttons down at the bottom. By default, they're rather small. But if you go into, with them selected, if you go into the property services width, maybe 35. Now they're overlapping, not a big deal. An author, magnetic line. I'll snap a line in here. Let's take this line. Well, first of all, let's make sure the line is horizontal. Like that. I'll take the line, drag it to those items. They're going to lock to it and do something like that. Update that view. And let's not forget to fix these as well, so freeze them. So select these items, we're going to say freeze, update that view. With them selected, I'm going to take all my views, shift select them all, and hit this button right here for update views of selected actors. Everything two dimension is the uh, collaborative actors, they're selected. 
and I just push those into every single one of these steps of the process right there. And we'll see that once we jump into the player. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's also create a little table of content here. And by simply clicking on a view, holding on control, dragging that to another view, we create a button. So now if I click this button, it's going to take me here. Uh, so that's like first step of the process. And let's just go to, I don't know, that guy. And we'll choose a random one here, maybe here. And this would be what you're choosing um, for the user to navigate to. So if you have 10 different steps, you probably want to bring in 10, 10 of these images and just use them for navigational, kind of like a table of content. All right, let's update that view. Now we're done. It's really that easy to convert your static image document to an interactive document. We just wanted to create some sort of UI. Now I'd probably want to save this as another SMG or maybe not even save it at all if this is just going to be something I'm going to send to a client as a one-off here. So if I go File, Save As, whoop, I didn't mean to click that, you go to File, you hover over the Save As, you click on Package, and I'm just going to say Save. All right, so as that's saving, we've got the hourglass here, and it's only, it only takes like 20, 30 seconds, and there we go. Okay, so now we go to our directory where I saved that. You'll see that uh, the SMG file, the file that I'm working with, is just under 7 megs, and the interactive SMG is just under 15. So it does add, you know, 8 to 9 megs uh, file size to uh, add that player, but it's a whole lot better than sending somebody a file and saying, hey, now you have to download a player to, to view that. Now, if you're doing this internally, I would install that free player. It's licensed free. You can install as many, many machines as you want uh, throughout the company. And then uh, just send out the, the SMG file. So the file size is a bit smaller, and everybody's able to view it. Um, or you can send out the SMG file. You're just going to be dealing with a slightly larger file. All right, so here we go. We got uh, our main page with navigational buttons. So if I click on these guys, it's going to take me uh, directly to those steps. Go back to the start here, click on this guy, it's going to take me to that step. Let's go back to the start, and navigational buttons here at the bottom by simply dragging those in. And you see, I, I could have cleaned this up a bit better. You can see they're overlapping images here, but really all I did was I, I uh, plopped them in and pushed them. I could go to each one of these views and do a little cleanup and really make this look pretty sharp. Yeah, I think it really gets the point across on how easy this actually is to do. If I go to a main page, or my main page here. Remember how I, I, I block the pan? So I can't pan, I can't zoom. I can do selections, uh, and I can rotate. So here I go, rotate the model. This is a way to assure that nobody's going to lose the model. If I could pan this off to the side and zoom way out, you might have this little tiny model up here at the corner and you've lost it. And this is uh, just assured that whoever you send this to it, that's not going to happen. This second view, I think I locked rotation. Yeah, I locked rotation zoom and a loud pan so you can kind of zoom in and out but we can't rotate the model so I can never see what's on the back of this for this particular view and that's really it so what we did here is we took a SMG file that had the steps pre-created steps one through whatever you have and we cleaned it up to create an interactive document so we created the navigational buttons down here at the bottom push that to all the views using that uh, update, update views of selected actors uh, went through and cleaned up things and locked down the buttons. So in the player, I can't select these buttons because I selected them in Composer and told them to freeze. And then also controlled the rotation and pan in a view such as this, where I can rotate and can't pan it. And that was done in the properties. And that's it. Alrighty, so again, my name is Scott Woods, product manager for Composer. And uh, thank you for joining.